You're listening to the Ordinary Vegan Podcast, where we teach you everything you need to know about adopting a plant-based diet full or part-time. Our goal is to empower you to live a long and healthy life. You can find today's show at ordinaryvegan.net or on iTunes. If you have any questions, please send an email to questions at ordinaryvegan.net. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Ordinary Vegan Podcast, number 30. Everything you need to know about the simple plant chemical component, cannabidiol, also known as CBD. I hope everyone enjoyed the holidays. I certainly did, but couldn't wait to get back at it, creating podcasts, creating recipes, making new videos, and doing everything in my power to help keep you well. I did a lot of thinking over the holiday week about my goals for 2018 and how I can serve all of you better, and it brought back a memory I hadn't thought about in many, many years. But when I was around nine years old, my grandmother gave me a beautiful princess outfit and a magic wand for my birthday. And that magic wand was so special to me because it was given to me by my grandmother. And I knew if she said it was a magic wand, then it was a real magic wand. And I could wish for anything and it would come true. So the first thing I did was wish for a bike for my childhood friend, Alan Dove. He had been asking his parents for one for a long time. Later that week, he went home, and his mother had bought him a bike. He immediately rode his bike over to my house, and we just stared at that magic wand, thinking, wow, it worked. What should we do with it next? Later that night, as I was laying in bed, I came up with a great idea. Why don't I take my magic wand and walk around my entire small town of Winthrop, Massachusetts, and make everyone's wishes come true? So I got up in the middle of the night, put on my princess outfit, snuck out of the house, and started walking up and down the streets of Winthrop, waving my magic wand and wishing that everybody would get what they want to make them happy. Later on, my family discovered I was missing and my father came looking for me. He found me walking down some dark street, dressed in my princess outfit and waving my magic wand. And he was very angry and yelled for me to get in the car. After I explained to him what I was trying to do, he took the magic wand away from me and broke it in two. I was devastated. That memory made me realize that the truth is, in my heart, I am still that nine-year-old girl who wants to make everyone's dreams come true. And now I do that by advocating a plant-based diet because I honestly believe with great health and energy comes great happiness. So whether you are brand new to a vegan diet or been vegan for years, I am so grateful you are here listening to this. And my number one goal in 2018 is to help you stay healthy as possible and my magic wand is a plant-based diet. If you're new to this podcast, a plant-based diet is a diet based on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes like beans and lentils, and healthy fats like nuts, seeds, and avocado. A plant-based diet is not only the best choice for a long and healthy life, it is also the best choice for a healthy planet and a way to protect animals who have been bred into existence to suffer on factory farms. If you're just getting started on a plant-based diet, full or part-time, I recommend that you listen to Ordinary Vegans podcast number one, Getting Started on a Vegan Diet, in podcast number 10, How to Get Optimum Nutrition on a Plant-Based Diet. Now, Let's get to the subject at hand. Cannabidiol, also known as CBD oil. 
Cannabidiol, commonly referred to as CBD, is by no means a new discovery. But recent advancements of research, scientific studies, and the use by the general population has put CBD oil on the map. The problem is people are confused about what CBD actually is, and many people assume it is marijuana and it can get you high, which it is not. About a year ago, I decided to take a long, hard look at CBD oil and its health benefits. And I must admit, in the beginning, I was skeptical because I wasn't seeing enough sound scientific proof. I started researching CBD oil because I began to hear and read a lot of stories about people using CBD oil for anxiety and PTSD. I became immediately interested because mental health issues are near and dear to me, especially for veterans suffering from PTSD. I also watched a documentary by Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN called Weed. And there was this little girl on there who started having seizures soon after birth. By age three, she was having 300 seizures a week, despite medications. They finally tried medical marijuana, and her seizures were limited to two or three per month. But then they discovered it wasn't the marijuana THC part of the plant that helped. It was the cannabidiol CBD the plant contained. They found out they could extract the CBD oil without including the THC. They also discovered that hemp plants, part of the same plant species, contained healthy CBD oil without THC. Charlotte is 10 now, and the great news is that she's thriving. It didn't take long for CBD oil to become known to the mainstream, but the confusion continued. Most people thought CBD oil was the marijuana plant with THC. So I became a research maven and decided to learn everything I could about the advantages and disadvantages of CBD oil. So let's break it down. Cannabidiol, also known as CBD, is a non-psychoactive chemical produced by cannabis plants like marijuana and hemp. Cannabis is a genus of flowering plant in the Cannabaceae family with many species, including hemp, meaning that both marijuana and hemp both belong to the same group of plants marked by common characteristics. Most of us are more familiar with the cannabis strain called marijuana that has been bred specifically to produce high levels of THC, which is the principal psychoactive ingredient that gets you high. Hemp, also called industrial hemp, refers to the non-psychoactive varieties of cannabis sativa, L. So both hemp and marijuana come from the same cannabis species, but are genetically distinct. Hemp is a cannabis plant that is harvested commercially for its seeds and stalks, which are used to produce a number of products, including food, nutritional supplements, medicine, body care products, paper, and textiles. All the raw hemp materials are imported from other countries, which is unfortunate because hemp is a great rotation crop for farmers. As it grows, hemp breathes in CO2, detoxifies the soil, and prevents soil erosion. Hemp also requires less water to grow and no pesticides, which makes it more environmentally friendly than traditional crops. Now for the big shocker. Hemp that contains little to no THC was made illegal to grow without a permit in the United States under the Controlled Substance Act passed in 1970 because it came from the same plant family as marijuana. 
What? So all hemp products like hemp seeds are imported from places like Canada because you can't grow it in the United States. Crazy but true. That would be like you going to jail because your brother committed a crime. You can't get high off of hemp because of the low chemical makeup of THC, where marijuana has very high amounts of THC, especially the marijuana that is specifically bred to get you high. So both hemp plants and marijuana contain CBD, but marijuana contains THC. So it's easy to avoid the THC by sticking with CBD oil that has been extracted from hemp. Now that we know the difference between CBD extracted from the hemp plant and CBD extracted from the marijuana plant, let's discuss how CBD oil works in our body and what's all the excitement about. Scientists are rapidly discovering more and more about the benefits of CBD. The big selling point being touted is that it's plant-based, safe, non-addictive, and non-euphoric. So here is how it works. CBD is a phytocannabinoid with therapeutic properties for numerous disorders that are even yet to be completely identified. What scientists are discovering is that it is an anti-inflammatory, anti-convulsant, antioxidant, and antipsychotic agent in potential medicine for epilepsy, oxidative injury, anxiety, PTSD, and schizophrenia, to just name a few. When someone takes CBD, the compound goes into the endocannabinoid system, also called ECS, which is made up of receptors throughout our body and brain. The endocannabinoid system plays a very important role in the body and has a huge network of cannabinoid receptors, which are spread throughout the body. What is interesting about that is the name comes from the cannabis sativa plant, because scientists found that the body makes its own chemicals called endocannabinoids that produce a relaxing sensation. The endocannabinoid system is perhaps the most important physiological system involved in establishing and maintaining human health. These cannabinoids fit tightly into the body's anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective, and anti-epileptic receptors. The best way I can explain it is think of the endocannabinoid system as literally as a bridge between our body and our mind. Many scientists believe if the endocannabinoid system is out of balance, our whole body can be out of balance. CBD activates cannabinoid receptors in the endocannabinoid system, like the adenosine, the vanilloid, and serotonin receptors. Receptors are proteins which bind to ligands, which are eons or molecules, and cause responses in the immune system. Let's start with the andesine receptor, which is involved in the release of dopamine and glutamate, two neurotransmitters in our body. CBD can boost these in adenosine levels in the brain. These specific receptors have anti-inflammatory effects throughout the body. After reducing the inflammation, CBD is able to block pain signals from being sent to the brain. CBD has been found to enhance serotonin receptors that influences symptoms of depression. King's College and the University of San Paulo in Brazil conducted pioneering research into CBD and its effects on anxiety. What they found is that high concentrations of CBD 
directly activates the serotonin receptor and causes an anti-anxiety effect. This serotonin receptor is also involved in a number of neurological processes, including addiction, appetite, and pain perception. In 2013, the U.S. National Library of Medicine published an experimental study. I will put links to all the studies I mentioned in this week's show notes, by the way. But this study demonstrated that CBD could help with neurodegenerative disorders. Neurodegenerative disorders is an umbrella term for a range of conditions which primarily affect the neurons in the human brain, like Parkinson's disease. CBD can also directly interact with the vanilloid receptors, which function to mediate pain perception, inflammation, and even body temperature. In a human study, researchers used imaging scans to understand which brain regions are involved with CBD's anti-anxiety effects. They found that CBD causes a reduction in blood flow to specific regions of the brain linked to anxiety, such as hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a small area in the center of the brain that has many jobs, including regulating many essential functions in our body like appetite and weight control, emotions, sleep cycles, and sex drive. These regions become overactive in anxiety disorders, whereas CBD seems to quiet this activity. CBD was also effective at reducing the overall anxiety of participants in the study. CBD also boosts adenosine levels in the brain. These receptors have anti-inflammatory effects throughout the body. CBD also works to manage pain by acting on the CB2 receptor, which are mostly found in the peripheral nervous system. By reducing inflammation, CBD is able to block pain signals from being sent to the brain. Remember earlier, I mentioned the most prominent case of CBD being used to treat epilepsy in a girl named Charlotte, who suffers from Dravet syndrome. Dravet syndrome is a severe form of epilepsy in children and at one point caused Charlotte to suffer from over 300 seizures a week. However, after starting treatment with CBD-rich oil, her seizures decreased dramatically to only two to three a month. CBD appears to do this by lowering the degree of excitation of brain cells, which contributes to seizures and possibly migraines. Another study found that the antipsychotic effects of CBD are related to its effect on anandamide. Anandamide is a neurotransmitter produced in the brain that binds to the receptors. It has been called the bliss molecule, and it's named after ananda, the Sanskrit word for joy, bliss, or happiness. It is considered an endocannabinoid, and it produces a state of heightened happiness. And it is also important in memory, motivation, and for the higher thought process. CBD has been found to increase levels of anandamide in the brain, which is linked to a decrease in psychotic symptoms. The Journal of Neuroscience published a report back in 2013 that cannabinoids may help relieve migraines and help with neuropathic pain, such as nerve injury or other conditions which can predispose patients to developing nerve problems like diabetes or uh, multiple sclerosis or shingles. So the list goes on and on about the benefits of cannabidiol, CBD, on our bodies. We are in the early stages of learning all the benefits, and what may work for some may not work for others. 
With all that said, this quote from Thomas Jefferson in 1902 reminds me of the discovery of this plant-based CBD. He said, there were never so many able, active minds at work on the problems of disease as now. In all their discoveries, attending towards the simple truth that you can't improve on nature. I think people are seeking safe and natural ways to help their bodies self-heal and improve their quality of life, especially people suffering from anxiety, depression, or PTSD and are forced to take antidepressants. Maybe this can help. Please make sure you check with your doctor if you are suffering from a chronic disease or take certain drugs to make sure CBD oil is safe for you to use. Also, remember, not all CBD oil is created equal. And as its popularity grows, so will the demand. I have seen it being sold in bulk from places like China, and you don't want to end up with inferior or unsafe CBD oil. So please do your research. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am deeply passionate about providing all the information I can to keep you as healthy and as happy as possible. And I hope I'm doing a good job. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe on iTunes. And if you get a minute, please write a review. You can find all my recipes and podcasts on OrdinaryVegan.net. Please join our Facebook community at Facebook.com slash OrdinaryVegan so you don't miss any of my Facebook Live cooking shows. And last but not least, Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you so much for all your support in 2017. And I look forward to bringing you even more health and wellness podcast in 2018. Till next time. Thanks for joining our plant-based community today. Together, we can accomplish great things. Please subscribe so you don't miss any of Ordinary Vegan's recipes and plant-based tips. If you have any questions or feedback, email us at questions at ordinaryvegan.net. Until next time.